In this video, we'll take a look at the process behind developing a new product, application, or website. When building a new product or improving an existing one, there can be many people working on different steps of the process. You can have project managers, designers, and programmers working on the same product. It's also important to include and consider the company or client and the customers or users of the product as well. If there's no plan, the process may find itself all over the place, moving and stepping in different directions, looking and considering things from completely different viewpoints. Although this chaos makes for a cool picture, like the one shown, this would not be good in terms of developing a new product. To help, we introduce the development life cycle. There are different steps involved in the development process, and the development life cycle is a way of dividing this process into smaller sequential stages. This all helps to enhance the product, project, and the design altogether. The development life cycle can be separated into a few different stages, planning, designing, development, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Let's take a look at what happens at each stage. The planning stage, as we saw earlier, is very important. In this stage, all stakeholders, which include all people who are involved with the project, share and discuss the plan. This includes understanding the scope or everything that goes into making a product a success. This includes deciding who is involved in each step of the process, the timeline of each step, the budget and the cost of the build, as well as what resources are needed. The next stage is the designing stage. This is when a prototype, a wireframe, or a storyboard might be used to give an idea of how the product will look and perform once completed. A prototype is a model that performs the basics of what the final product might do. The design doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but it should give the stakeholders a feel of what they can expect once the product is completed. A wireframe is typically used in web development, and a storyboard can be used in video game creation. All of these designs include drawings and graphics that will demonstrate what the final product will look like. The next stage is where the product is created. During the development stage, programmers write code while designers might create the final graphics. All of this is based off of the prior planning and designing stages. After the product has been created, the next step is to test it. During the testing stage, the QA team or a specific group of user testers examine the product to ensure that it's 100% operational. They check the functionality, the overall workflow, and they leave feedback when needed. At this point, the product can test well and move forward to the next stage or be found to have some issues and move back to the planning, designing, or development stage. After testing is successful and feedback is addressed, the product is ready for deployment. The application, website, or product can now be released either to the company or to the public. But we're not done here. There is one more stage called the maintenance stage. Software and tools can change or evolve. This stage ensures that everything continues to work and sends out updates if new features or integrations are needed. All of the stages of development are essential, but there are different ways of implementing them. For instance, the time that is spent in each stage can differ, or whether the stages occur sequentially or overlap for a period of time, this can also make a big difference, both in the outcome and the timeline of the project. Let's take a look at a few. The first method we'll talk about is the waterfall method. This model may work for specific projects, but it's not typically the best model to use. This is because it's a very inflexible model. The entire project is planned upfront and then each stage of the life cycle is completed sequentially until the final project is delivered back to the client or customer. The client or customer doesn't get a chance to see the product or offer feedback until the process is fully complete. The waterfall method may be good for staying on track with respect to timeline and budgets, but does not include the client or customer very often and can end up taking a long time to deliver something that the client is not happy with. Developers came to realize that they needed a more dynamic or adaptable model. The iterative development model still goes through the life cycle stages sequentially, but instead of a one-time delivery, they present their product, allow the client or users to provide feedback, and then they continue to cycle through the stages, upgrading and updating features until the client or users are satisfied and the product is improved. This speeds up the development process and allows for more client interaction and feedback. All of this helps to create a more polished product. However, whenever client feedback is considered, this could throw off the timeline or the budget and may cost more or take more time than initially expected. 
Another option to use is an incremental development model. Instead of building the whole product, a smaller, very basic product would be developed and delivered first. This product would be fully functional, but would not include all of the features that should exist in the final version. This allows for more frequent deliveries and a shorter time for the client to wait for a usable product. Eventually, the extra features would also be developed and then delivered to complete the whole product. This model is typically less expensive than the iterative model and leaves more room and time for testing than the waterfall model. However, creating a very basic working product is not always possible, and when it is possible, intensive planning is needed to split up the product into which successive features to build on. So there seems to be advantages to both iterative and incremental development. It would be great if we could combine these advantages, right? Well, in comes the Agile model. This model is both incremental and iterative. There are frequent smaller deliveries of the product delivered, and these smaller pieces are also evaluated and improved until the client is happy and the product is at its best. This is the most flexible and dynamic model. The stages of each delivery can also occur at different times. One team may be working on the second iteration of the first feature, while the second feature is being tested and the third feature is being planned out. The Agile model provides a lot of flexibility and short delivery times. Client or user feedback is used to improve the product as well. On the flip side, these updates and improvements can often be unpredictable and could end up costing more than expected. Scaling and splitting up the development into small deliveries can also be pretty difficult as well. All right, well now it's your turn to dive in and learn more about these concepts.